Hello guys, said the IT guy here and this is a video about order fulfillment from Shopify GraphQL API. So in the last video we saw the order fulfillment flow from the REST API and this is, this is the video where we are going to check out the GraphQL one. So some changes have been introduced into the app. So on the right side you can see this column appear. When you open up the order for the first time it, it won't be visible but when you click on actions and fulfill items then you will see this column pop up right here. So it has unfulfillable fulfill button and the fulfilled badge. So the ones that are marked unfulfillable, we know that our app cannot fulfill these items. Only the fulfillment service associated to this um, line item can fulfill this order. So that's why this is here. And uh, for the fulfilled ones, we know that it is fulfilled because the item fulfillable, fulfillable quantity is less than one. So that's why we know it. So in the show.blade, you can actually see this here. So if the item fulfillable quantity is greater than zero, only then uh, get here. Otherwise, just put fulfilled and move on. And if the item fulfillment service is exactly equal to manual, only then render this button. Otherwise, render unfulfillable. So that is the one. Okay. Okay. So the last video we saw that when we click on fulfill button, this model pops up and we can fill out these details and um, click the fulfill button and it will be fulfilled. So let's uh, do this. So let's put one, two, three, four, five. Shipping company is delivery. Um, I want to fulfill all five and let's put um, and after that, let's click fulfill. Okay, so after this, you can just refresh the page and you will see that the last one is now fulfilled. So therefore our operation was successful and uh, here's the result. So let's take a look at the code. Let's take a look at the code and in Shopify controller, you can see this function called fulfill order, which was the one we used in the last video. And it pretty much works the same way, except for one place where in this function, if it returns false, then this payload is formed and the API endpoint is set to GraphQL JSON here. And otherwise it is fulfillment JSON. And uh, yeah, so this function is the one where I form the request payload for the GraphQL API call. So this function is defined right above here. If you open this up, then you will see this mutation variable getting initialized with fulfillment create v2. Inside this, there's fulfillment and inside this, there's this function. And on the returns, we have the fulfillment ID and the user errors should have the field and the message and the mutation. We initialize this mutation as this and inside that this variable from above and return an array with the query index and this having the query in it. So in this function, let's open this up. So you will see that there is an empty array initialized here and uh, three steps are performed and uh, in each of them an index is appended to the temp array. So the notify customer, the same way from the request taken. Um, the tracking info is, this is constructed uh, from the request variable, the shipping company, the number and the tracking URL are here. And uh, at the last, we have the line items by fulfillment order, which calls another function, which is above right here. So open this up and we do find our line item ID and after that we return the fulfillment order line items and inside that you will see that the id of the fulfillment order line item is passed and the quantity is taken from the request so after that yeah this is all and uh, the same way the endpoint is set with the api endpoint which is determined right here it's either graphql json or fulfillment json and the headers are taken and the api call is made and if the status code we get back is 201 or 200. 201 is for REST and 200 is for um, GraphQL. So then this one order job is dispatched. Um, there are three parameters here, the user, the store and the order ID. So if you take a look at this job, then all it does is call this endpoint, which is order slash order ID dot, dot JSON. So this will call a specific endpoint to fetch just one order from Shopify and it will sync up uh, the details in the database. 
because at that point uh, the fulfillable quantity changes for the order um, when when a fulfillment process is gone successfully so we need to sync back the data immediately so this is what's done and uh, the response is returned and i'm just logging um, what we got in the response so if you check the logs then you can find so let me just check mine so if i go all the way down yeah so here we have response for fulfillment status code is 200 and body has this Fulfillment ID is here, GID, Shopify fulfillment this, user errors is blank, and the extensions we have how much it cost and actual query cost. So you have all of this data, you can save this in the database according to your requirements. So yeah, that's pretty much that's uh, pretty much it. Let me know if you found any doubts. Um, be sure to follow the API documentation, which is right here. So Shopify dev mutations fulfillment create v2. So just search fulfillment create v2 in Shopify GraphQL API and you will arrive at this page where you will see the fulfillment and the messages here and uh, the variables are specified here. And um, yeah, make sure to learn. And uh, because this, this requires any of these access scopes, these are all included in custom.php. So if you check here, then in api scopes all of them are uh, taken so we can make sure that our oper operation goes through so yeah that's about it see you